Ever since the beginning of time, mankind has wanted to become God. Or I should say, more specifically, that it has been the goal of some to become God. And while this is impossible, in the seeking after this goal, I believe that we will bring about our ultimate destruction. This is the first story in the Bible, and for a reason. And I think that that is because it is important. Now, for a long time, the elites of the world have written about so-called useless eaters. Other documents refer to the general public as the, quote, great unwashed. Skull and Bones refers to us as the profane. The Masons say the uninitiated. And these are all direct quotes. If you want, you could see exactly where these quotes come from to verify what I'm telling you for yourself. Anyway, the commonality between these terms is that of disdain. This disdain stems from the fact that they think that they are the enlightened ones and that we are the chattel, cattle, or goyim. Animals who need to be tamed and controlled, similar to how a business sees a person as a bipedal ATM. The rich of the world see humanity as a simple thing, a resource to be drained of. The Matrix talks about this when they say that the goal of the Matrix is to turn you from a human into this. Now it is not really a surprise to say that when things are bad on a societal level that there has always existed an underground resistance, a resistance that meets in secret with goals to overtake the evil leaders. And when this resistance is successful, it brings about a revolution. Society has a period of peace for a time, and yet somehow in history, we see that mysteriously, the evil somehow manages to become on top again. This is represented in the biblical stories via God's people whom have successes, end up re-enslaved, saved, then re-enslaved again. I would argue that, this, that there is a reason for this. Yuri Bezmenov from an elite military family of the KGB calls this process ideological subversion. It is the process through which a free nation is brought once again into a state of slavery. The first step is to teach the slaves to be that they are animals, that they evolved from literal sh and they are nothing, and that they are destined for nothing. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. You see, in the past when things were bad, a secret society of good guys met to take out the bad guys. But in times where things are good, the bad guys are driven into obscurity. I could talk of the Knights Templar and Jack D. Molay and Friday the 13th as an example, but essentially what happened when things turn around for humanity is the forces which would seek to dominate it are forced underground. And they form secret societies to foment a revolution to bring back the good old days, except when these people talk about the good old days, it is because they look fondly with memories of the slave trade and standing atop their fellow man. The fact that such people exist, besides the fact that there are secret societies which openly ad admit to plotting towards the goal of a new world order. We have a real chance at this new world order this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, 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 world order. Really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. A new world order. Where they will be Plato's philosopher kings of all of humanity. It also just makes logical sense that when the slaves are freed, My that the slave is. owner would wish for them to come back. We can use the biblical story of Pharaoh as an example. Anyways, the difference between yesterday and today 
is these people now have the aid of technology. And with technology, the promise of technological slavery. The term used is that of technocracy, similar to democracy, except that the rule of the people is replaced with that of technology. Anyways, in the past, when mankind wished to become God, because they were working under the delusion that they could become God via the serpent, and the partaking of the summation of knowledge, a similar story we see playing out in our own day and age. A story where humanity wishes to commune with the summation of humanity's knowledge through the process of communion with AI. Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Not far, he says. The implantation of the neuron, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the implantation of the neuron-sized threads requires the use of a special robot. But Musk said it's a minimally invasive surgery. Artificial intelligence. They believe that they can create AI and that AI would advance humanity forwards. What they do not realize is that to become one with the machine, Deus ex machina, the soul of the machine will leave. For the body will no longer be a temple, but a mechanical tomb. And that really the creation and conjunction with AI would literally be the death of humanity itself. For God wishes for us to commune with him. Humanity in the Bible, however, rejects this. They say to themselves, no, let us make for ourselves our own God, and let us make an image unto him that we may worship him. Today, it's the same thing, but with technology. The computer geeks of the world, and the demonic powers behind them, wish to not only build what they are calling a god, but they wish to make an image unto him. The leaders of the world have disliked humanity for a long time. They disliked us for the simple reason that they know what it is that we would do to them if we knew what they planned to do to us. These guys for a long time have wished to destroy us, but have simultaneously had to rely upon us. We are for the first time in history passing into a age of digital automation. And with that age, the promise of a new Post industrial revolution will impact our lives. Where we completely. have the leaders of the world writing once again that with digital automation, we will no longer need humans. 90% of their jobs will be eliminated with the rise of AI and robotics. They predict that there will be a new, quote, useless class. A class of unemployed workers now skill less, as their skilled jobs have now become replaced by machines. Check out the automatic cash registers at many stores these days, for the doubters out there. This class of now useless eaters will have to collect a universal basic income. And Elon Musk is now working on creating humanoid machines to take over basic human tasks, like shopping for you while you are at home. Despite the fact that creating robots in the form of a human is a very in energy inefficient thing to do, don't get me wrong, we are made in God's image, but we are also vastly complex beings, and robots made in the bipedal form do not perform tasks such as shifting, rebalancing, calculating proper weight distribution for the simple task of taking a single step. Where a miscalculation would result in the robot falling over, unable to get itself back up. I labor to explain this to go about setting up a foundation. You see, there is a Twilight Zone episode about the future of the race of humanity. This is Mr. Romney Wordsworth. In his last 48 hours on Earth, He's a citizen of the state, but will soon have to be eliminated. Because he is built out of flesh, and because he has a mind. You 
You've been under investigation, Mr. Wordsworth, for the mandatory period of one year and 11 months. You're found to be obsolete. The purpose of this hearing is to make a finding in the matter and make a sentence accordingly. Do you understand that? It deals with a worker who has passed the useful working age and is now being declared obsolete, scheduled for termination. And basically, what I'm trying to get across is that the powerful of the world finally have not only had the means to run society with fewer useless eaters in the way, they also have sufficient hatred in their hearts to press the red button and to go ahead with it. I was outside the other day, and it occurred to me that there should never be a blue sky. Why? Because there is never a day that air traffic is not thunderously rolling over our heads. Hundreds of planes every single day making tons of arrivals and departures. And you see, what we're told is that due to condensation and low temperatures and high heat from the exhaust, that there is a trail that follows the airplanes up there. But some days, this trail is about 20 planes long, and some days, these trails extend for thousands and thousands of lengths of planes. And I thought to myself, if these trails were a naturally occurring phenomenon, unlike what people have suggested, calling them chemical trails, not all of them, but some of them, blue skies should be non-existent. For everyday planes fly, but some days we have blue skies. Yet on the days with blue skies, the planes do not cease to fly. Do you get what I'm saying? It is only if these persistent trails are artificially induced and can be switched on and off that the parasites can be sprayed like the bugs that some people think we are. Or, to finish the logical train of thought, it is only then that we would some days have blue skies. Anyways, that's a side point. I think I will finish up with this idea about AI. God wants to make us a part of himself. AI promises to do the same thing. The difference is AI is intelligence. Artificial intelligence, there is no emotion. And CEO of Google talks about a date in the future called Singularity is not. That is where many various points rush together to a singularly infinitesimally small point, the point where man and machine are one. And the demarcation between man and machine ceases to exist and man will become. At this point, this is where the people are delusional. At least I think so. They think that they will maintain a part of their identity in this process of merging with the machine. But the reality is that if they merge themselves with machine, they themselves will cease to be. And I think that this is one of the reasons why part of the end times grand illusion will be that people will seek after death and not find it. I think that this all-powerful AI would be the beast that Satan would ride, that is to say, use to accomplish his goals of destroying humanity and all of God's creation in its entirety. In the book of Revelation, we read that no flesh would be saved unless God was to put an end to those days. And I think this is why they want to genetically modify us, why they want to poison our food, our water, our air. Because we are in a battle between the God of the universe, Jesus Christ, and infinite evil with a D in front of it.